Hello everyone, I'm going to be doing a bit of work to my motorbike because the other day when I was riding it, I started making a funny noise, like the chain was slapping around. But I noticed that it was only doing it in a certain gear, which was the third gear. So I thought I better drain the oil. And when I drained the oil, I found this in the oil, or sitting in the engine. So I figured it must have been a tooth from the third gear in the transmission and to get to that you have to pull the engine off the bike. So I'm going to pull everything off that I have to to be able to take off the engine. First of all I'm going to take these side covers off. And the is just one bolt holding them on. And then it just pops off, there's one clip there and then one at the back here. I'm going to take the seat off now. Just uh, these two bolts, one on this side and one on the other side. Kind of just slides out. Yeah. Now I'm going to take the fuel tank off. Got to turn the fuel off first, but I broke the thing, so I just use pliers for it. Pretty sure that's off because it's got off, on, and reserve. I just leave it on reserve. Get this fuel hose off. Got to get these off, there's one bowl here, joining them together. And then, just like pops out. And then you got to just pull this out. And now this tank should slide backwards and come off. Take the exhaust off. Starting to get somewhere now. I'll probably just get all this dirt off here before I continue on. Now I'm gonna take off this crankcase vent. I'm gonna get the carburetor out of the way a bit. Air vent hose out. Yeah, I'll probably take that manifold off too. Make it easier. Undo this. Yeah, rock. Just where it comes out anyway. Just put this out to the side. That should be right. So next up, what I gotta do is disconnect a few things. I had a look in the service manual to see what I'm gonna do a bit. Pull this off and disconnect some of these. Yeah, so they're the ones I disconnected. Now I gotta disconnect the starter motor. Yeah, it's not gonna come off easy. I bought this impact screwdriver that other day because pretty much all the bolts on the engine are like regular screws so I don't want to round any out and there's a lot of them that are hard to undo so I'm going to use this thing works alright now I have to take the actual starter motor off Now I have to undo the earth lead there. So what I have to do now is just loosen this rear wheel a bit. The reason why I've got these zip ties here is because I kept snapping spokes and they keep dropping through the rim and going through the tube. So these are here just to hold the spokes so they don't drop through the tube or through the rim. And it's working out so far. This one I broke but I noticed it before it fell through the rim. Done a few little upgrades here and there. I noticed I painted the wheels black. I used straws and masking tape to mask up the spokes. I tried tucking the masking tape in between the rim and tire. Then just stuffed newspaper around the hub. I hit it with some primer first. 
I did this back in lockdown when I was bored and I wanted to try paint splatter the wheels but the problem was because we were in lockdown there was no shops really open not even Bunnings to regular people so I just went to Cheapest Chips and I got like this craft paint to do it and I also got these sparkles it actually looked pretty sick at first when I did it but once I sprayed the clear coat on it it kind of went a bit funny I'm pretty sure you can't even tell that the paint splatters were there now but if you actually had proper spray paint and mixed it in with glitter you probably would have been mad so now I have to take off the foot peg and shifter I've already taken the shifter off and I reckon the reason why this might have happened but I'm probably wrong, I don't know I didn't do a good job explaining this so I'm just gonna do a voiceover basically the original bolt for the shifter fell out and I lost it so if you have an XT, I recommend putting Loctite on that bolt. So I used a random bolt that fit it, but the problem was occasionally when I shifted up a gear, it would get stuck in the up position and wouldn't bounce back down. And when the problem happened, it kept doing that. So I thought that might have been the reason why, but I don't think it is now. The regular shifter, if I put it on here, it would be way out here because on a normal dirt bike or whatever, they're usually way back here. So I'm either gonna like cut this one up and have a real short shifter or just buy like an aftermarket one and cut it up. Because yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this uh, linkage thing. Put so that was gonna be real tight for some reason. Also we've got some new oversized foot pegs for it. Pretty sweet. Much better than the stock ones. Got to undo this cover. Oh yeah. That's another thing I've done. Smaller front sprocket on by one two. I think this is, yeah, 14 tooth. Almost up to pulling the engine out now. Just gotta disconnect these brakes, I'm pretty sure. The old drum brakes, boy. Yeah. I got rid of the brake pedal switch and all that when I took most electronic stuff off, so just gotta take this out and that. I think the engine's ready to come out. All I have to do is undo all the mounting points and then it should be all good. Sorry I didn't explain the best what I was doing here, I was kind of just focused on getting the engine out because I was having a bit of trouble. But pretty much the best way to go about it would probably be get a second person to help you. Maybe get them to hold the back wheel and lift it up and down and kind of wriggle it while you hit it with a long punch. Because the bolt was seized in there pretty good so... There could be a better way to go about it too, but that's just what I could think of. Alright, well, that's out. Just have to actually get it out. Just gotta get this out. Just gonna try to put a screwdriver up in here. And 
I got the engine out and I just used a screwdriver and a punch just to hold the swing arm together. I had a bit of trouble getting that last bolt and my memory card kept filling up and I didn't want to delete certain clips so don't know how much I got of that but anyway I'm going to start pulling the actual engine apart now. So I'm going to take out this spark plug, you know, you do all the timing and that. Now I'm going to take off these on both sides. Got that cover off. Now I've got to rotate the crankshaft uh, anti-clockwise until I see the letter T. Right there. So as you can see there, the T is lined up with that mark and then up here, that line there is lined up with that pretty much. Got to undo this chain tensioner now. Just going to attach the wire to the chain so it doesn't drop down. Now I'm going to take the cylinder head off, you got to undo the bolts a quarter of a turn each in a certain order. Better take out these two, I've almost forgot about it. Got to undo these two bolts and get rid of this clutch cable holder. I've broke two gaskets now, they must like glue it down in one part because like on two of them it's just been one little part that breaks. Take off the piston. Just gonna put some paper towel down there just in case I drop the little clip. Probably better get that now. There it goes. All right, now I gotta disconnect this neutral switch lead. Got the bolts all undone, two of them were longer than the rest so I just marked the positions those were in and I put them in bags and ones for the longer ones and ones for the regular. Take this off here and then I'll take out this starter gear. So to get this rotor thing off there's a special tool that holds it still while you undo this but I reckon if I use an impact, I should be able to get it. Yeah, too easy. So to get this flywheel rotor thing off, whatever it's called, you kind of need a puller, and I'm pretty sure you just need a bolt that fits into that outside thread there, and it will just go all the way down and pull it out. But I don't have the right tool, so I'll I'll probably try to find a bolt that fits it tomorrow. Alright guys, I couldn't get it off without using the special tool, so I borrowed the special tool. I just tried a regular bolt, but I can't get the same thread pitch. So here we go, I'm just gonna wind it in. Yeah, <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna take out this woodroof key. Now I can take off this, take off the timing chain guide and take out the timing chain. Now I'm going to flip it over and take out the oil filter. 
And the oil filter cover. One bolt's longer, but I'll be able to remember that. Now I'm going to undo this side of the crankcase cover. This side's crankcase cover, there was three different uh, length of bolts, so put them all in separate bags and marked it. It's not that hard to tell anyway where they go, you can tell where the longer ones go a little bit by just looking at the length of the things here. So now I'm going to take off the clutch, just got to undo them quarter of a turn, each in a crisscross. Take all these out. Now I have to bend these down so I can undo this nut. That should do it. I'll tip it over. If you were to do it with a regular ratchet, you'd probably have the clutch holder tool holding it still, but with the impact you can just get it easy. Now I can lift up this oil pump gear cover and take the whole thing off. I'm glad I bought this thing, there's no way I would have done this with a regular screwdriver. So now I've got to undo these two. I'm going to put a rag in here to stop them from spinning. Go for it. Now I'm going to take this all apart. Take out this shifter thing over, you dig. I don't know what it's called, but. Now I can undo these screws to separate the crankcase. You have to undo them in a certain order, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and just time lapse it. Should be right to come off. So you're supposed to separate it from the right side and there's places, two places for the screwdriver to go in to open it up. So I'm going to give it a try now. There we go. That's got that side open a bit. I'll try the other part now. All full of mud. There it goes, that wasn't too bad. So now I'll take out these shift fork guide bars. And now I should come out. There it goes. Yep, just as I thought, the tooth from the third gear here, that's what came off. 
So all of that just because of that. <laughs> all right guys, I've got all the stuff I need to put it back together now. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just clean up all the parts and get all the old gasket and um, all the oil and that out and clean it up. I'm going to use this parts washer, brake cleaner and these brushes to clean everything up. Everything's all cleaned up now, so next up I'm going to hone this cylinder for the new piston. Now it's going to clean that and it should be all good I hope. Alright so now I'm going to start putting it back together. Just going to add some of this stuff to everything. Put this balancer in. Now I'm going to install a transmission. This one goes down like that and then this one goes up like this. And now you gotta add these shift forks in at the same time. They got like a little logo on them telling you which way they go. So this one's the left one. That one. Center is this one. And then the right one. I'll just try to get this in. Add this one in later. Yep, long one goes on this side. Actually, you probably add this in first. So now it's locked up. So I finally got it to work. I had one of the gears around the wrong way. I had this one here flipped up the other way so that where the fork went in was at the top and the gear was at the bottom here. Put it together exactly the same way except I put it in this case because it's a bit easier to do. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention about uh, the actual gear that was broken. So that's the old one. And this is a new one here. I had to take it to a shop because this gear here is pressed on. So they took it off and put it on for me. Wondering what all that stuff is and that's that assembly lube stuff. When I look in the manual for putting things back together, it says you have to use this type of grease. And when I search it up, it just comes up with this stuff anyway. So I'm gonna just use that and send it. And sometimes it says to use just regular engine oil and so it's used 1030 and that's what this is. So I moved everything back over into this case because it would have been too hard to put it on with half the stuff in one and then the other one with the other half. So just got to clean up everything now on this one and then seal them up. So now I'm going to put the sealant on to join the cases together. Sealing on, now I'm going to put the cases together. I'm just going to put the bolts in. Got the cases to pull together nicely. Right, I just got to torque them down now. Seven newton meters. There it goes. You gotta do them in a certain order like when you undo them. Alright, so it's all done up and I might have put too much leak in. I hope not because as you can see here it's coming out the top. Which I don't think that's a bad thing. But what I'm worried about 
is where it's thin if it actually like filled it up i think i didn't put very much on them anyway because when i did it i didn't want to get it over the top so i only put a little bit so i reckon it'll be fine i'm just surprised how much came out the top because i didn't put like that much can i add these on not sure what the point of that is but The long pin lines up with the hole on here and just goes on like that. It says to put some Loctite on the bolt, so we're going to do that if there's any there. And it says to do it up 12 newton meters. Just going to add some grease into that little seal where the shifter comes out of. So now I'm going to put the shift shaft in. The spring goes under like that and then it just sits against the bottom of the case and that goes over that and then that slides over there. So that's how it goes on. The spring down there just sits against the bottom of the case and then the other side goes Underneath there, you can't quite see, but the spring holds this up against there, and then yeah, that just goes over that, and then this goes over this. I just wanted to show you guys because I couldn't really find how it goes, and you can't really see on the pictures on the manual just in case someone needs to know how it goes. Put the gear on and this. So yeah, you got to get a new lock washer. The two punch marks have to line up to each other. Like that. Come on. Same thing, exact same part number two. So you have to do them up to 50 newton meters. Just gonna put a rag in there to stop it spinning while I tighten them up. Just gonna spray some oil in the oil pump. And then some in the oil passages. So you gotta put a good amount, otherwise it can cause damage, so. Some more oil. Got another lock washer, this one's different to the other ones. Gotta do it up to 70 newton meters and it's gonna be hard because I don't have a clutch holder. I don't know, I'm kinda just thinking about putting a rag in there to stop this from spinning and then just wedging something in there, but I feel like these are gonna break off easy, so I don't know yet. So I quickly made a tool to try and hold it with. Just gonna screw these down and then get the socket in there and use this to hold it. There we go, that was easier. Got that done. Pretty sure it goes like that. Yeah, this bolt goes in here. Put the push rod in there, and then the ball. Now I'm going to do the clutch plates. Just going to put some engine oil on there. So you got to start with a friction plate. And then a clutch plate. So the third from the top, you have to put in this other type of friction plate. It's only one like this. So yeah, 
that goes this one and then this yeah then go back to a clutch plate and then a friction plate then a clutch plate then a friction plate and then that's it so the third pair from the top pretty sure is what it means and then to finish it off with a friction plate so this piece here goes in like that and then it goes on here I didn't really explain this part the best, but that piece I just added is what's used to adjust the clutch inside the engine. And at the moment, that's all the way wound out. On top of it, there's a slot where you can turn it with a screwdriver. How it is at the moment, it probably wouldn't even touch the push rod if you push on where the clutch cable connects up. So it would have to be tightened. You can't do it too tight, so there's no play in between the push rod and that in the manual. It says it has to be a little bit of play but pretty much you just got to adjust it so when you push on where the cable connects up it fully disengages the clutch and when it goes back it fully engages again and then there's a washer and nut that goes on there now the springs go on I'm gonna do it up to six newton meters. We'll tighten that up to eight newton meters. This here has to match up with that. You can just get it to move with my hands. I'm gonna put the dowel pins both on the same piece this time, I think, because I had one on one and then one on the other. Now I'm gonna put the oil filter in. Gotta spray some oil down in there first, it says so. O-ring goes there, and then you have this big O-ring, and then you. Ten newton meters for that one, and seven for the other two. All right, so now I'm gonna put the timing chain on. Also the chain guide, I got a new one of these because I don't know if you can see in the camera but there's like grooves from where the chain ran against it so I thought I'd just get a new one. There's a washer. Now I've got to put the woodroof key in. I think I might have got it. Make sure. Just gonna wrap this extension up and try to put it in here. Now I gotta put the starter gear on. Putting the gasket on. So I'm going to be putting a new piston in. This one's high compression than the stock one. It's for a YTM, YTF 225, but apparently they fit. Everyone was saying in the forum page. So I went to set the proper ring end gap for the piston rings, but my vernier calipers, I'm not sure if they're accurate and the measurement I got was right, but basically the size that I got that I should have had to file it down to, it's already bigger than that gap, so obviously I can't do anything. And I checked the stock ones and they're pretty much the exact same, so I'm just gonna leave it. I can't do anything anyway. Got the rings on. All right, so now I'm gonna put the piston on. I'm just gonna put this rag in there. Don't drop anything down in there. All right, gonna put the little sir clip. There we go. So you got that first clip in. There it goes. 
Now I'm going to put the down pins in and now the gasket which goes like this. And then our o-ring goes on there which I've got a brand new one. Now I've got to put the cylinder on which I'm going to put some oil on everything. So yeah, I forgot this O-ring here. Good thing I remembered before I did much more. Put some more oil in there. Got the clutch cable holder and two bolts to hold that in. I don't like the way it's sitting so I might actually tighten these up later because it's just pulled it to one side. That just pushes down in there like that. Just got to put these dowel pins in. There it goes. Alright guys, I'm just going to clean this head up a bit more. I tried to clean it just with some steel wool. But there's still a fair bit of stuff on there, so I'm going to try cleaning up. Alright, so now I'm just going to resurface the head a little bit, just with 600 grit. So it's all nice and flat, and it's got a pretty nice surface on there now. Apart from, there's like two marks that are on there. So now I'm going to put the head on. Alright, so now I'm going to put the head bolts in. I'm just going to put a bit of oil on these washers in. And then there's these two bolts. I'm going to torque these down to 22 Newton meters. I've been doing them up in stages and I think it's about to be 22. And now I just have to do these two to 20. I'm going to go back and do these ones up now. Now I'm going to put the cam sprocket on. I've got it lined up at top dead centre there. So just going to put this in. Get it so it's lined up with the top here. So I had a bit of trouble with the timing chain and cam sprocket. Getting it to sit where it should. It was like a few millimetres off the entire time. It took me a while to work it out because I thought I had the chain on the crank properly, but it wasn't. So I've got it to where it goes on there easy now. I mustn't have had the chain on the uh, crankshaft, little cog, whatever it's called. But yeah, it sits on there easy now. Now I just got to get the timing set up right. Now I do that up to 60 Newton meters. I'll just give it a few spins to make sure it's all good. I hope so. So now I have to put the tensioner in. I've got the new gasket for it. And with a little screwdriver, you can put it in there and turn it to push the tensioner all the way in again. Got to tighten these up to 10 Newton meters. Got this little cover bolt that goes on. Yeah, so it's important that the chain's definitely on the bottom cog properly. And to get it on properly, you really have to jiggle it around to get it to hook on again. I was moving it around and still didn't make a difference, but I fully lowered the chain down, made sure I could see it, and I moved, jiggled it around, and then, yeah, it must have just hooked on properly. I'm going to check the valve clearance now and the intake side is 0.05 millimetres and that just fits in there so that's good and the exhaust side is 0.15 which that fits in there without moving so that's good. So the rest of this should be pretty easy now that's all the hard stuff done. I'm going to put this side cover on. I'm going to put some oil up in here. Got a fresh o-ring in there. 
Same thing for the other side. Got to put this little cap on. Don't have much left now. All I have is these pieces here, the seat, the plastics and the fuel tank. I'm going to put on the intake manifold now. Alright, so I'm going to try to put the engine in. I cleaned up this bolt quite a lot. So hopefully it'll slide in a lot easier this time. So I'm going to pull this punch out and put the bolt in. Yeah, so I don't know why I put that one there, it doesn't go there. They go here and then here also. Got to put some grease on this o-ring. Put the star motor in. So I don't know if I've done a video since I removed a lot of the stuff that was on the bike but pretty much redid the wiring harness and yeah I just thought I'd mention that because I don't think I've filmed me doing it. So now I'm going to hook up the clutch cable. Now I'm going to put the exhaust on. I made a header up for the motorbike and I tried to paint it the same colour as this but it didn't really work out so I'm going to just make it raw but I'll do that another time. I just want to put it all back together for now. Probably should have filmed when I made that too. Got to put this up in there first. Just gonna give it a quick wash without the fuel tank and all that on. Just clean the air filter. I just wanted to show you guys this also. I pulled out the snorkel that goes there. It might get a bit more dirt into the air box now, but it actually makes a pretty good difference. And I also added these vents on both sides. I don't really know if they did anything, but oh well, at least I tried. Time to add some oil now. I might just let it turn over a bit before I actually start it. This one. The only thing I'm worried about now is that little oil passage where I put the silicon. I just hope it didn't block it up. So. When I start it, I'll probably start it for a few seconds and then I think there's a little check you can do. I think you might undo this one here to see if oil comes out. Because I don't know if that oil passage is to get oil back up here or what, but I'm just going to do that anyway because I'm a bit worried about that. Because everything else seems good at this stage. Put on the fuel tank now. Find out if it worked or if I wasted my time. Hey, that's 
good. Shut it off. Just kind of want to do that check. So yeah, I'm gonna take this out and see if any oil comes out. Pissing out there, so that's good. Starts up pretty much instantly. put this little exhaust guard on too. So what I'll probably do is either buy an aftermarket one and shorten it somehow, or just modify this one. For now I'm probably gonna take the one off my pit bike, even though it'll be a bit too long. After seeing how it works, I don't think that was the problem, but I just don't really trust it. Also when you got motorbike boots on, it's way too small to like get your foot under. I know you can probably adjust it up, but it's just a weird size. Yeah, that goes. Yeah, it's pretty far forward, like my heel's only just touching the foot peg. It'll do just for now. It actually works alright because you can kind of just hook under here. That paint did not work at all, it's just getting burnt off. And it was high temp paint too. It's good that it's not leaking any oil so I'll be able to put this back on. Alright that's everything, that all worked out pretty well and there's still a few more upgrades in that I want to do to the bike. Like I want to get some higher bars. And I don't know, there's just a lot of things I want to do actually, so I'm going to keep making some more videos of what I do to the bike next. Definitely got to get this exhaust sorted because it looks bad like that. I just wanted to mention I also put a YZ front and rear fender on the bike and I also put bigger jets in. At first I think the bike was running too rich after seeing what it looked like on top of the piston, but now with the high compression piston I think it's pretty much dialed. Go for a quick ride and then I'll wrap this video up. I can't run the bash plate with this shifter, it hits it. I was thinking there was something wrong but then I realised that that's what was going on. I mustn't have tightened up that bolt enough and it's come out and there's oil going everywhere. At least there's nothing serious. So I was like, oh man, did the silicon fail or something? But yeah, it's just that. I found the bolt, which is pretty lucky. Oh, there it is. I was gonna say, and it had a copper washer too. It's right here, the washer. That's perfect then. <laughs> Stoked as I found it on the ground and then the washer was right here, I was trying to find it. I don't think it would have caused any damage because I shut the bike off pretty much straight away. And that is used as a test while the engine's running to see if oil's coming out. So, don't think it would have damaged anything. I know I was revving the bike, which you probably don't when you test it. It only has to be done up to 7 Newton meters, so I must have just been excited and forgot about it. Cleaned it up and filled it up with oil, so... See if it's all good. So to finish this video off, I want to test this little motorbike jump I made so I don't tear up the bottom of the rolling. Still got to finish the landing, but the idea of it is to jump it and be able to hit this corner.
soon as you land, it feels like you're gonna hit the tree. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you made it to the end of this one, you're a legend. I know this is a long video, but I hope it entertained you guys, or if you have the same bike, it helped you out at any way. Or maybe it even inspired you to work on your own bike, because I wasn't sure I'd be able to put this all back together in that, but it worked out, so I'm pretty happy. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.